guys, what's up? My name is Tess. Welcome back to my channel. I am a licensed esthetician here on YouTube and in today's video I want to focus on how you can adjust your skincare for the seasonal change we are about to experience going from summer to fall. One of the most common things I hear from friends and clients is as we experience a seasonal change, people notice their skin doesn't function as it did before. There's a lot of common reactions that can occur from a seasonal change and usually the air is a bit drier so we have a lack of humidity, the temperatures drop and because of that people might experience sort of like a dullness, a dryness, and a flakiness, possibly even more breakout as we accumulate what is known as surface dryness, essentially dead skin cells building up on the top layer of our skin while we have oil coming up underneath. This can most definitely result in breakout. I think a lot of people are actually really surprised to find out their skin may break out more in the colder months more so than summer because they do have that oil coming up underneath and that outer layer of surface dryness. So it's very important to adjust your routine accordingly. So this doesn't have to be an overhaul of everything you have. You don't have to go throw out everything you're using and start fresh. You can start by incorporating some small changes and tweaks where needed to really address the hydration and make sure your skin is healthy. It's so important to listen to your skin. Don't just go by something you're reading online or watching or what your friend is using because how you might be reacting to a seasonal change or any skincare change for that matter is going to be different and specific to you. So I have three tips in this video to help you adjust your skincare routine for the colder months. I really hope it helps. If it does, if it brings value, please hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment for me. I'd love to know what you're thinking and it really goes a long way for me in terms of YouTube. So thank you guys so much for watching as always and the kind, loving support you guys give me it really means the world and I love you guys so much you are such a big part of my why so thank you from the bottom of my heart and without further ado let's get into the tips okay the first thing I want to talk about which I feel is very important and oftentimes underrated is cleansing and cleansing is one of the biggest things I think you can do to adapt your routine to a seasonal change. I think it's important to have two cleansers in your routine and especially to have one that is your go-to gentle cleanser that is going to make sure the skin is nice and cleansed but not feeling dry or tight after. That is very, very key. Your skin does tend to produce a little bit more oil in the warmer months, so a lot of people get accustomed to using more of a gel or foaming cleanser in the summer months. It might be a little bit more active to ensure you are really dissolving congestion and alleviating some of that oil. One of the most important and often underrated aspects of skincare is cleansing and I think this really is important when it comes to a seasonal change. In the warmer months our skin does to produce a little bit more oil and a lot of my clients and people I know tend to use a cleanser that might be considered a little bit stronger so it might have a little bit of an active ingredient like a glycolic or a salicylic and it may be more of an intense foaming cleanser. I'm never a fan of SLS, sodium lauryl sulfate in cleansers. However, I think it's important to listen to your skin and possibly consider some alternatives if you're noticing the cleanser you were using in the summer isn't quite working for you anymore. And by the way, I always recommend everyone have their go-to gentle cleanser that is a little bit hydrating and is not imparting too much change on the skin because you should have something in the routine you are able to pair with your active ingredients. A question I am getting all the time, especially on TikTok, is can I use my salicylic acid cleanser? I think there's one that's really popular by V. Can I use that with something like benzoyl peroxide and retinol or retin-A? And the answer is no, you likely shouldn't. It's, I don't know the formula of that one exactly, but 
it's my hunch that this cleanser is likely a little bit too strong and I never recommend mixing an acid like salicylic acid with something super active and exfoliating like a retinol or a benzoyl peroxide. So definitely make sure you have a gentle cleanser in the routine and especially as we experience a little bit colder temperatures, you're gonna wanna have something that is hydrating and calming and able to cleanse the skin without producing too much irritation. I think it's a good idea for everyone to have at least two cleansers in their routine. I'll show you what I use and I don't want the focus of this video to be on product and what I use necessarily, but I really enjoy having a gentle cream cleanser such as this one by Image. This is the Vital C Hydrating Facial Cleanser. I like to use this in the morning. I notice I don't necessarily need a gel cleanser in the morning. so. I use this a lot, I use it in the morning, and then I tend to use it to remove my makeup as sort of my first cleanse and my double cleanse. And I like this in place of an oil because it doesn't leave as much residue on the skin. So this is sort of a great do it all for a morning cleanser and a first cleanse. The next cleanser I really enjoy using is this one from Is Clinical. It is the Cleansing Complex and I do recommend for most people having some sort of gel cleanser in the routine. This can be something you use nightly or maybe post-workout or post-sweat and to help you really ensure when you do your double cleanse at night you are removing a lot of the impurities that are deeper in the skin. Your first cleanse should sort of remove that surface layer of SPF, makeup, oil and debris, and then your second cleanse, preferably a gel cleanser, will really get in there and help you cleanse your skin. Some people might want to opt for a third cleanser, and I think there's totally a time and place in the routine for a cleanser that's a little bit more active, maybe something that has a salicylic acid or a benzoyl peroxide, but I think it's something that you want to use strategically, and when you notice your skin needs sort of that oil control, maybe after a big workout or a sweat. So. I'll leave that up to your discretion. It may just be something you use less often as we experience the seasonal change. And I think it's something for people to be mindful of because obviously a lot of people are going out and purchasing this cleanser because they know salicylic acid can help manage acne, but it is good to be mindful that at the end of the day, you don't wanna compromise that barrier. And cleansing is so important because you want to keep the skin clean and help prevent inflammation and clogging in the follicle. That's where breakouts begin. But you want to be mindful too much over exfoliation with an acid can wear down that barrier and eventually lead to more inflammation. So my main point with all of that was that you may want to adjust your cleanser a little bit just depending on how your skin is feeling and reacting and consider something a little bit more gentle especially for your go-to daily cleanser. The next part of adjusting to a seasonal change and just always with good skin health is hydration in the skin. Now when I mention to a client that their skin looks a little bit dehydrated, usually their first reaction is, oh my gosh, yes, I need to drink more water. And while drinking more water is so vital, of course you want to do it, it's going to benefit all of your organs and your skin health. What I really mean by hydration is topical hydration. So the products you apply on your skin that are water binding or that introduce water such as aloe or hyaluronic acid. So I'm talking more so about those topical ingredients that you are putting on your skin as opposed to what you are ingesting. Surprisingly, only a little tiny bit 1% of that water intake reaches your skin cells. So while it's very beneficial, it's even more beneficial to for your skin to think about what topical products you can introduce to help bind water to the skin throughout the day. And remember, oil and water and skincare are two totally different things. So if somebody is dehydrated, they should start to implement more again, water binding ingredients as opposed to occlusives and oils. Some ways I really 
trying to think about introducing more hydration in my routine is again adding those ingredients like aloe and hyaluronic acid and I will use serums toners are a great way to add more moisture and sort of a drink of water to your skin daily it can be the first thing you do out of the shower is use a toner with one of those ingredients aloe or hyaluronic acid glycerin those are great water binding ingredients to the skin and that will help keep the water molecules on the skin Third, you can opt for a little mask. Again, I love aloe for hydration, so a mask with aloe is a great way to ensure your skin has good water levels. And then the second part, which I sort of touched on of hydration, is occlusives and locking in that water. So it might be important to think about if your moisturizer is working for you in the colder months. A lot of times people need something with a little bit more of a thicker consistency in the colder months. A lot of times people who are able to use an oil-free moisturizer, for example, in the summer, they might want to think about, as the temperatures drop, using something that's a little bit thicker. Adding that occlusive layer, like an oil, is a little bit of a seal. So again, it's going to lock everything into the skin and ensure that it's, the water stays on your skin for a longer period of time. So you might want to think about even adding a little bit of an oil. And I say proceed with caution here because I think oils are fantastic, but in my experience from what I what I have seen overdoing it with a lot of oils can cause more problems if they are a problematic oil it can cause dryness over time if your beneficial hydrating ingredients aren't able to properly penetrate and it can certainly result in breakouts so choose your oil wisely make sure to use it in moderation it's not something most people need to do every night unless you have extremely dry skin you are living in a very dry climate but if you do notice a little bit of dryness and you feel like you wake up and your skin has experienced a lot of moisture loss you may want to think about using oil over moisturizer is the correct way to use it not mixing it in your moisturizer but using it as the last step in your routine over your moisturizer will help keep that water bound to the skin as you sleep my last suggestion for boosting hydration in the colder months, especially as we tend to turn up the thermostat, we like to stay warm and cozy and go to hot yoga, things like that, that can really take moisture out of the skin. So something I love to do is use a little humidifier. I keep it by my bed and that way it is just adding moisture to the air and it is really nice. Something I recommend for a lot of people just for upping the quality of their skin. Having more humidity in the air can be very very beneficial. I will actually link the one that I use because I really like it and I've tried out a couple. This is the best one in my opinion. It holds the most water so it will keep going throughout the night and I think it's pretty aesthetic and cute so I will put that link below for you guys. The last tip I have is also equally important. These are all important is to think about how you are exfoliating. Again, oftentimes in the colder months, we experience that accumulation of dead skin cells and we might experience a little bit of pigmentation from time spent in the sun. I know I get a little bit of a melasma mustache above my lip and exfoliation is truly one of the best things to combat dry skin as well as pigmentation. Exfoliation really is so crucial to brighten and repair your complexion. And I believe both types of exfoliation, both physical and chemical, have a place in people's routine. I know a lot of people give physical exfoliation a bad rap and it seems like chemical exfoliation has almost become like, you know, the gold standard of exfoliation. But again, I think both have a place in the routine. While chemical exfoliation will dissolve and digest dead skin cells, it's the physical exfoliation that's really going to give you that lifting action, which is so important. And it's equally important you choose the right type of physical exfoliation product. You need something with round beads, something perfectly spherical. That way the product will not scratch and again, cause micro tears 
Um, we've heard a lot about that with the St. Ives scrubs and, you know, really a lot of more natural quote unquote scrubs. This is the place where you want to be careful. And I love plant based products, but it's very crucial you avoid things that are going to be scratchy, such as a walnut or any type of nut shell scrub that can be damaging to the skin over time. Now, if you are rosacea prone, super sensitive, or you have a lot of inflamed, rashy type of breakout or whiteheads, you wanna proceed with caution. And I think a good sort of like middle ground is to perhaps opt for something that has a little bit of an enzyme as well as a little light bead or physical exfoliant. That way you can apply it to your skin and avoid really like scrubbing in those tender areas such as if you have rosacea on your cheeks. You don't want to be super harsh with the scrubbing. You don't want to be harsh in general and apply a lot of pressure. Active breakout, same thing. You don't want to really like vigorously scrub because that will produce more inflammation, but it's something you could gently massage into the skin in certain areas and allow the enzymes to address the areas you don't necessarily want to go at vigorously by scrubbing. Exfoliation is so important and I'm surprised many people I talk to don't really have that in the routine, but it's so important to ensure you are removing the outer layer of dry cells so when oil comes up underneath, they don't get trapped. Regular exfoliation will also remove those dull, tired cells and encourage plumper, younger, new ones to form underneath. I'm also a big fan of using exfoliating acid serums, perhaps a glycolic, salicylic, and lactic sort of serum all in one can be wonderful for dissolving congestion. I know it sounds like a lot, but if your skin is prepared for it, it can really be a game changer. And I would prefer a serum like that or a retinol that's going to speed up cell turnover. I would prefer to use the acid there in a serum and a leave-on product as opposed to the cleanser as your everyday go-to daily thing. Exfoliation is so different for everyone and it's an area where I'm hesitant to give somebody advice about the exact correct amount of times they should be exfoliating per week because of course you don't want to overdo it. Two to three times a week tends to be sort of the average recommendation, but you'll have to pay attention to your skin and what I want to teach above anything and giving you guys like rules to abide by is listening to your skin. It really took me so long to figure out this fine line of exfoliation and what's beneficial and what's doing too much. I will never forget the time that my skin first started to experience acne. This was well before I was an esthetician. I wanted to remove the little vellus hair on my face and I used Nair. Yeah, Nair in the bathroom to remove this hair. It just resulted in complete inflammation all over my face because it was an extreme case of over exfoliation. So I use that example, which I know sounds idiotic <laughs> that now that I'm saying it out loud, but I'm using it as a learning lesson that you guys can maybe take something from and reconsider in your daily routine how you may or may not be overdoing it with acids or different types of physical exfoliation. Again, listen to your skin, dryness, flakiness, irritation, more excessive breakout, those can all be signs that your skincare routine as it is maybe isn't quite working for you. So use this advice as a guideline and use, you know, any advice, hopefully it's professional, but use it as a guideline. You are the one who truly knows what your skin is feeling like, what it's experiencing. You know how it is reacting to things on a daily basis. So as much as somebody else can offer their professional advice, they truly haven't lived in your skin. So make sure you are paying attention to those cues, what your skin and body wants and needs and craves. Your skin is truly always changing, turning over cells and adapting and any of these symptoms can be a sign it is adapting to mother nature and seasonal changes. So again, theme of this video is 
listen to your skin. Okay guys, those are my three tips for how to adjust your skin to a seasonal change. I truly hope it was helpful. If it was, again, please leave me a little comment. Let me know what you thought. Let me know what you would like to see in the future. I would love to know. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you and I will see you in the next video.